So what I'm going to do is to give a little kind of a crash uh, insight of what's happening with transition projects around the world, uh, well, particularly around the UK. Uh, and then I'm going to get, I was asked to talk a little bit about the big society, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that. And then give a, uh, maybe a taste of where all this might be able to go. So a lot of transition projects start out doing awareness raising because lots of people don't know about peak oil, don't know about climate change. Uh, and transition initiatives find very interesting, playful, innovative ways of doing this. This is in Cornwall, uh, where all the different transition initiatives in Cornwall uh, had an awareness raising day where they did a kind of a relay race with a copy of the transition handbook all over Cornwall and presenting it to, the, to different mayors all over Cornwall, uh, going around by train and by bicycle. Uh, lots of initiatives have what, uh, what we call an unleashing, which is a, a launch event. It's the day that where, where it's a celebration of, of what they've done so far. It's a celebration of the possibility of where it could all go. Uh, and we always say that it should be the, the event which in 10 years' time, uh, the local council will put a blue plaque up to on the hall outside and say that was the evening when that process started that brought this place together uh, in, in, in this extraordinary way. And last Saturday, we had the first unleashing of a transition initiative in a Brazilian slum, which was really extraordinary, in Brasilianda in Sao Paulo. Uh, and they had all, everybody out, hundreds and hundreds of people, a big, big celebration there. It was really quite extraordinary. <laughs> Using tools like open space, we try and get away from the idea that, if you, that all the ideas that, that if, if you want to make your community more sustainable, what you need to do is to bring in experts and write you a plan or whatever. A lot of what you need is already there. You just need the tools for unlocking it. And so things like Open Space World Cafe are very, very useful. This is one of the very, very first open spaces that we ran in Totnes nearly four years ago. And it's fascinating. Recently, I was looking back through the notes that were taken, all the ideas that came up in that meeting. And amazing to see how many of those things have actually happened. There's something about when you sit down with a lot of people and you talk about, you, 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 you raise your ideas ideas what you want to see happening and other people say that's like my idea too we should we should do that how many of those things actually come to be is quite extraordinary <laughs> and we're also starting to see networks emerging all across the country as there are a number of initiatives that they join together to support each other that with what's happening here in London but also in the in, in in the southeast in the south in the this is an event called transition north uh, up in the north of England, there's, the, there's a network in Scotland. So this, this thing of groups coming together and supporting each other is really fascinating to, to see. And in the run-up to the election, quite a few transition projects ran hustings events where they brought all their local candidates together to look at uh, how are your policies and how is your thinking going to, uh, going to make this place more resilient? How does it feed into this idea, the, uh, the idea of this being a more resilient uh, low carbon place, uh, which is which has been fantastic, and certainly the the one that we ran, the the, the, the MP who got in has been very very into uh, supporting transition since that happened. And it's also about trying to look at nuts and bolts, how people are actually reducing their carbon emissions uh, in a, in, a, in a measurable, meaningful way. And this is a project that we've developed uh, in Totnes, but there are now lots of different transition projects around the country who are developing their own versions of this. And it's called Transition Together, and it's based on the idea that you get out on your street, you knock on the doors, you get seven or eight households together, uh, and then you work through a simple program of looking at energy, looking at water, this kind of thing. Uh, the average house that gets involved saves about one and a half tonnes of carbon, uh, and we've got 60 groups in, in Totnes doing this with about eight households per, per group. Uh, and it's fascinating to see that because a lot of the groups get to the end of it and go, oh, we're finished now. That was great. Let's do it again. And then they start and then they do the whole thing again and go through it. Or then they look at the piece of derelict land at the end of the road and think, oh, let's, let's find out whose that is and take that over and grow food on it. And this whole thing of visualising the future, I think one of the th failures for me with, with Copenhagen as well was the fact that most of those people who were going to negotiate on our behalf, if you'd asked them, uh, what... what do you imagine a low-carbon version of where you live to be like? Do describe a low-carbon world to me. 2030, we've done it. What's it like? What does it smell like and sound like? What, what, what do you hear when you walk down the street? And that, ha having that is really, really important in terms of being able to move towards it. This is a transition timeline where we get people to tell stories of what happened on the journey towards that place. 
Working with local councils is also really interesting. Stuff starting to happen. This is in Taunton, where Transition Taunton uh, ran a visioning workshop about what would the area be like if it was more resilient. Uh, and they worked with everybody in the council, all 375 people, from the senior executives down to the guys who cut the grass and the people in the, in the canteen, looking at what does it work, what, what would that actually look like in practice. It's a, towards a resilient Taunton Dean, you'll find it online. It's a really fascinating piece of, piece of work. And there's local currencies, this whole idea of plugging the leaks, that our, that our, our economies are a bit like big leaky buckets. All this money comes in and most of it pours out again. And every place where the money pours out is a potential local livelihood, a potential local business, a potential local enterprise. So these different tools exploring such as local currencies, such as uh, uh, inward investment into communities, these kind of things are really, really important and some fantastic uh, exploratory work going on here. And Transition Network is working now with Lambeth and with Bristol to develop a, and with the New Economics Foundation to develop an electronic uh, currency as well. And celebrations. So I think transition is something that's, that, that's very creative and colourful and bold. And people, people do the most extraordinary things. It's the Trash Catchers Carnival, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, which was an extraordinary triumph of human spirit over uh, uh, adversity and uh, an amazing celebration of, of, of many, many things. And this idea of, of, of accessing land as well, uh, that there's huge waiting lists for allotments. So how, do, how might we get around that? At the same time, there's lots of back gardens that nobody really uses and lots of land that nobody really uses. So this is something that I think in many ways transition projects become a bit like sort of research and development units. They go off and they try things out and then if it looks like an idea, like the draft uh, busters thing here in, in London, which has spread, then spread very quickly through different initiatives. The garden share scheme has been something that, that we started out with as the idea of just setting up a dating agency, really, to link yeah. people up who want to garden with people who don't have a, people who have a garden they can't use, uh, and it's all over the place. And the idea of working with businesses, this idea of an energy resilience assessment, is a way of working with organisations and businesses to look at where the vulnerabilities are. You know, if we're looking at the kind of price volatility that, that Michael's been talking about, well, as an organisation, as a business, how do you know where that's going to affect you first? Where are the vulnerable bits? And that's a tool for, for, for doing that. And one of the things that impressed me recently, I go around quite a lot to different transition projects, and I went to Malvern, uh, and they had the unleashing of transition Malvern Hills. And they'd taken a huge punt on it, and they'd rented the biggest venue in, in Malvern, which is a theatre that takes about 500 people. And the, the last person who'd been on stage there was Bobby Davro, I think. <laughs> And, uh, uh, and so they, and, and a week to go, they'd sold 100 tickets and they were getting a bit sweaty. And then on the night, it was full. The whole place was full. They had three choirs. It was the most extraordinary celebration of Malvern. But they did this little bit that was fantastic. They called tran transition endorsements, where these 11 people came up and stood on stage. And then they each had one minute to talk about uh, what, what transition meant to them and what they were doing to support it. But they were the head of the local police, uh, the head of the local council, the local MP, uh, the principal of the local school, the principal of the local college. And it was an extraordinary insight into, whoa, so you've been going for a year and a half, but all these people are, are behind this and, and, and are supportive of this, of this endeavour. 